all right getting around to doing this uh video from my oil sample I took on the truck a few days ago a week ago or so whatever it was um ran the amsoil oe 10w30 for about uh, was it 8782 miles uh, our oe is good for whatever your oe recommends GM happens to be uh, 10,000 miles on their oil life monitoring system. For those, uh, I think I've mentioned it before, and for those that may or may not know, the oil life monitoring system, when your oil life pops and says, hey, it's time to change the oil, that has no indication of the condition, actual condition of your oil. That's something the manufacturers came up with, algorithms and math and all that sort of stuff with the computer that uh, monitors operating temperature, how much idle time the engine had, how many RPMs it was turning, speed that's been traveled over you know, the length of time, miles, hours, that sort. And it says, well, for a normal oil, you know, running these conditions temperature-wise, length of time, RPMs, all that sort, an oil should last this amount of time before you need to change it. Like I said, GM, it's 10,000 miles on average. At least in my diesel truck it is, and I think most GMs it is. Uh, but of course, check your uh, owner's manual for that information. Uh, most manufacturers right now are recommending 7,500 miles on average, minimum, and that's been that way since the early mid-90s. So when you go in and have your oil changed at the quick lube or wherever, and they put down a date and time mileage for you to come back in 3,000 miles or three months, if you trust what they're putting in there, great. Um, otherwise, yeah, you might want to come back in 3,000 miles. They, they might be putting the cheapest stuff in there possible. Uh, not saying that it doesn't meet spec, but it's probably meeting the minimum specs. And uh, you know, I've, there's, been, there's a website, I, I'll, I'll link it below, <clears throat> where uh, is a PQI, PQI? I can't remember. I should have wrote that down. But anyway, where they go out and they buy bottles off the shelf in, in stores or wherever else, and they'll do random inspections going to quick lubes across the country and uh, pull samples out of the drums, buy sample bottles off the shelf, and run their tests on them. And there's been instances where quite a few uh, come back, and it's a nation, it says, you know, they send a letter to the stores that's selling that product you must pull this product off the shelf now because it does not meet spec. And that's being bottled and sent out and, you know, you're buying it and putting it in your car and hoping you're, it'll last. But anyway, that's just a whole other, uh, something else going there, just a little bit of information there. The best way to know if your oil is good or not, right here, an oil sample. About 25 bucks or so, you can send your oil in when you change it or even you don't even have to change it. if you watch my video pulling the sample on my Altima the wife's car there I didn't change oil at that time I pulled the sample sent in to see how it was doing and they came back said it was still a good sample and I could run it even longer than what I had run at that time um, anyway or they'll come back and say hey this oil is you know certain levels are too high or too low you may want to change it change your filter top it off or change the oil completely. But the only way to know for sure is an oil sample. So anyway, without further ado, let's get in my sample here and uh, we'll cover a few other things in the meantime. But uh, oil analyzers, you can get these samples from uh, AMSOIL through my website, through AMSOIL. And uh, for those that don't know, oil anal analyzers is not an AMSOIL lab. It's their oil analyzers is an independent lab doing their own thing. They just happen to be who we've partnered up with to sell their kits for and uh, that sort. Not only that, if you know, of course, you know, Amsoil prides themselves in quality. If something doesn't meet Amsoil's uh, standards, we're not going to sell it. We don't want to have anything to do with it. So. Oil analyzers, we've, we like them. They test more, more inclusive than most other uh, samplers out there. There's Blackstone and 
others. I know Blackstone's a big one that a lot of people like. We test more stuff, extra stuff that you have to pay for, for Blackstone to test on. We include, well, analyzers includes in their test. So, you know, that's great if you want to use Blackstone or any other. I'm, not, I'm just throwing that name out there just because that's the most popular one you hear about. And there's a few others out there, but I just know that name and, like I said, the most popular one that I know of. Uh, but anyway, where you have to pay extra stuff for fuel dilution or certain other features in your oil to be tested, you know, for them to test it, oil analyzers includes those tests tests in uh, our base price, base uh, kits. So without further ado, oil analyzers, of course, right up here at the top shows, if I can get this without knocking the uh, camera around here. Uh, my oil came back, rated still normal. You got your normal, abnormal, and critical. Uh, and of course, too, then you got your zero through four, but however you want to look at it. Point being, mine's still normal. I could have ran mine more. I did go ahead and change mine because I was fixing to come up on a uh, trip out of state for a few months here. I didn't want to have to deal with it on the road, changing oil, that sort of stuff on the road. So, plus I was coming up on my 9,000, 10,000 mile mark. I figured good enough, I'll go ahead and uh, change it and be good to go. Anyway, my oil came back, norm you know, still normal in the good range. I've had samples come back abnormal. And number two, I've never had anything come back higher than that. But of course I take care of my stuff, change oil when I need to and uh, whatnot. Information, uh, all this stuff you fill out when you send your paperwork in with the sample and they put it in their system. The lab that I sent mine to was a Houston lab. There's five lab, four labs across the country. I usually send mine to the closest one just because it's closer. It'll get there faster. I'll get my results done faster and get the get them back faster. You can have them emailed to you, which I usually do because email's instant. As soon as they punch in their system and hit send, I've got my results. You can have them mailed to you. Also paper copy, but it's easy enough just to you know, print out the email. Uh, what else we got here? Date sample, date received at the lab. So it'll take them a few days. There's a weekend in there, but, you know, no big deal. And, of course, they sampled it the next day after they received it. Over here, I got the, a full-flow bypass system, dual remote on mine, averaging 15 micron on the uh, full-flow, 15 to 20 micron bypass filters down to 2 micron. So there's that extra filtration I got going, which also Duramaxes are uh, 10 quart systems. My dual remote adds two extra quarts to my system. So I got 12 quarts of oil in my system, more compact, which of course annotated here also. Uh, as you know, the more fluid you have, more cooling, more contaminant level, you know, more stuff it can handle. And of course, the oil that I was running in my system. AMS oil, ADN is our 10W30. Uh, OE, heavy duty diesel oil. All right, let's see here. Uh, flag data does not indicate an immediate need for maintenance action. Right there, first line. No need to change it. But uh, get in here, we'll see what else it says here. Uh, continue and observe the trend and monitor the equipment and fluid conditions. Oxidation is at a minor level, which, uh, da, 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 which may be due to extended drain intervals or high operating temperature. Uh, I, can't t I can't see the high operating. My temperature gauge always reads good. And uh, extended drain, like I said, I've got, I was only running, what was it, just shy of 9,000 miles on this sample. Um, Viscosity is slightly high. Causes include contamination, oxidation, incorrectly identified viscosity grade, or adding a different viscosity grade to the component. Uh, that right there. I did, when I changed my oil back in June, I had two extra quarts of old formula. And of course, and then topped off with the uh, new formula that we had. Uh, gotta love technology. 
I was recording and uh, it decided that uh, it wanted to shut off on me. So I'm back. Uh, let's see wherever I left off at. Um, uh, here, viscosity is slightly high. I'll touch into that here in a minute. Um, causes include contamination, oxidation, incorrectly identified viscosity grade, or adding a different viscosity grade to the component. With that, uh, if you notice down here my oxidation is high, a little bit high down here, but not bad. It's still, you know, as we mentioned, you know, notice before green here normal, so it's not way out of whack. But uh, before I ran the 1030, I had 1540 in here, so there may have been some residual left over in there that uh, you know is throwing those number off maybe just a hair you know all sorts of things go into that that they are able to look at um, um, silver possibly from solder uh, with that the silver you notice right here my silver which is a wear metal not typically found in oil uh, it'd be something added in the engine so solder I do know that in past uh, samples that I've gotten it had mentioned silver before or copper too I think copper I think uh, came from cooling systems some stuff you know your cooling fins that sort of stuff in your radiator but also there's a little uh, cooler thing I don't know what that you would call it. I forget now but uh, that's right near the oil filter area there and that has a tendency to leach out a little bit um, Again, not high. It's higher than normal, but, well, actually, it's, it is normal. It's green. But they, it was high enough to where they flagged it. It's not just zero. So there's a little bit of leaching of silver coming from somewhere, solder-wise. Uh, flagged additive levels are higher than expected for the identified lubricant. This may have been topped off with a different lubricant. The fluid may be uh, misidentified. It's not because I, I know what I put in there. <laughs> um, or a different lubricant or formulation may have been in use prior to recent change. And lubricant change acknowledged. Like I said, I did change the lubricant, so they've noted that, yes, I did change lubricant. Uh, that's why they didn't really recommend too much else for extending the drain or anything like that. But here for the uh, formulation may have changed. That goes back to what, like I mentioned before, I had a couple quarts of the old formula from a couple years ago. This new formula we just changed last year, about mid-year, so beginning of the year, which was a newer bottle. So I used up my old stock and then topped off, you know, the majority of it still, but some of the old stock with the uh, new stock. So the formula changed. That's probably where that uh, comes in, where they, again, were able to identify and know that uh, you know what oil I'm using if somebody sent in pens oil they would know what that you know they know what that formula is for the pens oil uses or Quaker State or anybody else what their additive levels are from the you know get-go from brand new oil samples to be able to tell what a high level or a low level is in your used oil sample uh, let's see let's, what else we got going on here uh, boron was low high and magnesium Ma boron is a multi-source metal borons used in both uh, oil just an additive that they use for different uh, actually let me see here check this out uh, boron da -da -da. here it is boron contaminant Additive in engine coolant or oil, so it's an additive in oil uh, compared to level in used oil. So it's a, it can be a contaminant in there. Flagged it a little high, but still nothing to worry about. And magnesium is an additive metal. Magnesium dispersant detergent oil additive wear metal in steel alloys. So magnesium comes can come from some steel alloys if there's something in your engine. Otherwise, it's a dispersant detergent additive used in the oil formula for uh, helping keep your engine clean and whatnot. 
Now why that's flagged as high, I don't know. I can look into that a little bit further to see just exactly what a normal level is. But uh, either way, I'm not worried about it because up here at the top, overall, it's on the low side of abnormal and I'm still, my oil's still considered good oil. Next line down here, we got the date sampled, uh, date they received it. Miles on the oil, lube time, like I said, 8,782 miles, just shy of 9,000 miles there on the oil. For those that think, you know, 4,500 miles or so is max that you should go on oil in a diesel, whatever. I'm not uh, here to debate because I've got proof right here that you can go further with a quality oil. Lube change, yes. Uh, filter change, I didn't change the filters. I left, I used the stock filters because my filters are good for 25,000 miles or up to one year and the bypass is good for two years. But I'll change those the next time I change my oil. Um, fuel dilution, uh, less than one. Again, probably zero, but still it's well in limits. Soot level, of course being a, a diesel, Soot is very uh, prominent. It's what makes your oil turn black, amongst other things. But the uh, main cause of oil turning black is just a, it's dirty burning. But still, the soot levels themselves, zero. Uh, water, no water infiltration. Uh, water not only can come from a leaky uh, leak in your coolant system, which if that's the case, some of these other numbers up here are going to be flagged because of silicate and other items that are in your uh, coolant, it's gonna raise a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but if not, if water is high, but nothing's flagged, it's from condensation and that sort, from just hot, cold cycles of your engine. That's why it's important to warm up your, you know, if you do a lot of short trips, you'll get, could get water or in the form of condensation in your oil. You want to be able to drive your vehicle every once in a while to heat it up to operating temperature for an extended period of time to burn off that moisture that's uh, forming inside from condensation and whatnot. Uh, everything always checked viscosity, the viscosity checked at 100 degrees Celsius. Right here they raised, uh, showed it high, but uh, I'll show you that here in just a second and then TBN, your base number, that's important. Uh, I'll show you that too here on this other sheet. Uh, right now it's about half of what the TBN started at. Started was 10.2 10 was the OE original, well, original TBN for a fresh uh, batch of oil. So it's depleted by about half. I can go a little bit further on that. There's still... Uh, good use in there. TBN, what, what your base number does, that determines just how well your oil is going to transport all those contaminants out of the oil, through the system, back to the filter. And then of course your filter collects those contaminants, filters it out, and you got clean, fresh oil going back through, back to your motor. But uh, it, yeah, that's what collects on your soot, soot particles, other little wear particles, all those other contaminants that's uh, dirt that may have gotten in from got past your air filter and got into the oil system your base number that's those that's the stuff that you know latches on to those contaminants transports it through the system back to the filter to be collected in the filter so that's out of anything you know in your oil you know for levels TBN base number is one that I like to look at the most uh, oxygenation, nitration. Oxygenation was a little high. I got to, where'd that go? Somewhere around here I got one of those where it lists out about the oxygenation. What causes that? But uh, anyway, there's the oil sample. Uh, let's look here. Oxidation causes increased viscosity and acid formation. So there too with the as i mentioned before in the uh summary the write-up that they put down about the higher viscosity possibility there <clears throat> all right so like 
you know, when they mentioned about the, uh, in the right up there, about the viscosity being a little higher. There you go. Uh, this, I thought it said something about what caused the oxidation. Uh, oh yeah, anyway. Guess not. Uh, viscosity. Oh, anyway. I can't find where I put that paper now that had that on there. But anyway, for viscosity though, like I said, I was running at 1030. Uh, for a 30 weight oil, minimum 9.3 and as long max less than 12 and a half. If you remember, mine showed 12 and a half. So I'm right there at the base of a four, basically a 40 weight. You know, my oil with time and use and anything else going on with it there, the contaminants, whatever, uh, basically jumped up to a 40 weight. No big deal. You know, diesel's rated for 1540. And even still, you can run a little thick or two. But with time, with use, oil changes. Be it sometimes it'll thin out. Namely, if you've got a dilution problem, a fuel dilution or whatever, or it might thicken up just from you know, whatever causes that, the oxidation, but, you know, contaminants, that sort. Again, not that my contaminants were bad enough to warrant uh, freaking out over. As you've seen, everything's still good. So the importance of well, a good point about taking an oil sample, it tells you the quality of your oil, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, anyway, that's that with the uh, sample. One thing else, too, here that AMSOIL provides that I've yet to find many places else, many uh, many other places, these uh, data bulletins, data sheets that we provide. Everything on our site has some kind of data bulletin attached to it. When you look up a part, look up an oil, grease, whatever it might be, there'll be a link there where you can click on the data bulletin to read about it in, in PDF format. Um, I can get these, you know, you can print them out too, and then if you want, whatever, but uh, it's all PDF, so you can click on it, read right there. It tells you about the oil, you know, what our uh, thought process in developing that specifically, you know, be it the uh, OE. Oh, come on, focus. There, there we go. Sorry about that. Wasn't paying attention. But, uh, yeah, whatever, you know, the, our thought process in the, you know, a little bit of spec about four times better wear protection on our OE line, which is our, for lack of a better way, you know, turn, way to put it, it's our bottom line oil. Still better than most of anything else that you're going to buy off the shelf. Namely, you know, so still good oil. It's our bottom line, but it's the, it's our economy line, if you will. Still used with our, you know, some of our better uh, base stocks. But, get on with that, a uh, little bit about it, competing brand, here's a uh, uh, scuff test, you know, competing brand, severely scuffed liner, non-scuffed, everything's done via testing, you know, to spec, you know, certain uh, standard, industry standard testing is done. It's not just we threw this on and pulled somebody el else's out of wherever, everything's done in a lab, of course in our own testing facilities for uh, testing. And then uh, two standards, sta uh, industry standards. Uh, what else we got here? Da, da, da. Excels and temperatures, viscosity control, uh, minimize oil consumption. Of course, every vehicle is different, but I know on mine, when I change my oil, I'll go the 10,000 miles and not have to add a single quart. You know, call it luck, call it whatever I've had my I'm coming up on 213,000 miles, and I've had AMSOIL in my truck since I bought it, day one, with 37,000 miles on it when I bought the truck. So, you know, just shy, what was 180,000 miles or so, 170, I've had AMSOIL in my truck. Um, so anyway, data sheets, data bulletins, give you a little bit of information like that. And then they also break down application for those guys that, uh, actually know and look at, you know, CK4, CJ4, spec, Volvo, Mac. You can see them all here, all that this oil meets the spec for. Uh, Dexos, that's already, it's not listed on this one, but Dexos isn't a diesel spec. 
anyway. But it meets, you know, all these specs. The 10, 1030 doesn't meet Chrysler spec, but the 540 and 1540 do. So there you go, all the specs that this, uh, this one meets up here. All those, you know, the kinetic viscosity that we talked about there. Um, at 100 here, starts out at 12. Mine was, mine showed up, sampled at 12.5. So, not far off, far enough for them to flag it, but that might have been because of the old formula or something that uh, was in there that I had used to top off, you know, use my old stuff and the new stuff. Uh, what else? We got pour point, you know, for your cold. So, negative 38 degrees, this thing's still pourable. Um, 540, being that it's a lighter weight oil, it's going to flow a little bit better at a little colder temperature. 1540, you know, back up. But then there's some of these other industry standard tests, a four ball wear test, no act volatility, that's your burn off. No act volatility is when you're, you, you know your vehicle doesn't use oil, it doesn't, you don't have a blue haze out the tailpipe and you're not dripping oil on the ground. Your oil's probably just a, you know, not very good with uh, maintaining its, you know, what are ma maintaining? It's burning off, evaporating for for a lack of a better way to put it. So your no act volatility, percent loss, blah blah blah. You know your stand, industry standard right there testing. Um, there you go. Look at that, the 540, 9.2. A little bit worse, but then it's also a thinner grade, so it's going to possibly, you know, burn off a little bit quicker too. But anyway, that's, again, I've yet to have to put, add any oil in between oil changes on my truck. Doesn't It just doesn't burn off. TBN, here we go, 10.2 started at. Remember, mine was at uh, 5.4, so still have has a little bit of life left in it. And uh, a couple other things, sulfate, ash, content, whatever. So anyway, uh, shelf life, compatibility right here on this uh, data sheet. Uh, after, here's a good one. Aftermarket oil additives are not recommended for use with Amazon synthetic diesels. Reason for that, why me, I'm not a chemist. I mean, maybe you are, but I know I'm not, and I'm not gonna jack with the formula that they have put together to make the most out of the oil. Um, simple as that. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a chemist. So our stuff is all formulated to meet a certain spec. There's a fine balance with additives. If you put too much of something in, it's going to hinder something else that, you know, with your base number or your pour point or your, uh, volatility, something's going to suffer protection in general. Uh, something's going to suffer. So Anytime you start messing with, you know, adding additives to any oil for that matter, you're just messing with, you, now your Pennzoil, your Quaker State, or your Mobile One that you swear by and is the best thing out there, you just jacked with the formula and did you make it better or did you make it worse? So with that, this turned out to be a lot longer than I was expecting. Uh, I'll try to cut this down some, I hope. Uh, but everything else, you know, everything seemed to flow and got the information out there that I was wanting to cover here. But uh, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, please leave me a message. Message me direct. Call me. You know, log in. You know, go online. Whatever. But uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Again, sorry about how long this turned out to be, but uh, a lot of information. I probably could have gone into a little bit better detail on some stuff, but again, I didn't want to get too, uh, too long on this. So with that, we'll call it good and, uh, we'll catch y'all later. Thanks for watching.